This video describes the orthogonal regression procedure added to Stack Graphics 18. Orthogonal regression fits linear regression models when both y and x are subject to error. It may be applied to the linear model y equals alpha plus beta times x. It may also be applied to transformable nonlinear models such as y equals alpha times x to the beta, which may be linearized by transforming y, x, or both. The hexagon plot you see here shows the measured magnitude of over 2,500 earthquakes near Mount Etna. On the y-axis is the local magnitude, while on the x-axis is the measured duration magnitude. In seismology, it's of interest to estimate the linear relationship between ML and MD. Orthogonal regression begins by assuming a linear relationship between the true values of Y and X. I'll let uppercase Y and uppercase X represent the true values, which are related by the equation Y equals alpha plus beta times X. The observed values of both variables, however, include error. Lowercase x, which is the observed value of x, is assumed to be equal to the true value of x plus an error epsilon. The observed value of y is the true value of y plus an error u. Given n pairs of measured values, the line is determined by minimizing the quantity shown here. It involves the sum of squared deviations of y about the line and x about the line. There's a trade-off between the deviations in the x and y direction which depends on the ratio of the error variances eta, written here as sigma squared of epsilon divided by sigma squared of u. If eta is equal to 1, orthogonal regression minimizes the sum of squared perpendicular distances between the points and the line. Otherwise, the distance between the points and the line is minimized at a different angle. When performing an orthogonal regression in Stack Graphics 18, a number of different options may be selected. The first is the form of the model to be fit. In addition to the linear model, there are 26 transformable nonlinear models from which to choose. If a nonlinear model is selected, it's assumed that the additive error model shown earlier applies after transforming x, y, or both. The second option specifies the variance ratio eta. It may be set equal to 1, it may be estimated from the sample variances, or it may be set equal to some known value. Care should be taken in selecting the variance ratio since the model is quite sensitive to this choice. Be especially careful of selecting the second estimate estimate from sample variances, which sets eta equal to the variance of the y's divided by the variance of the x's. This would only be appropriate if the data were randomly selected from a bivariate normal distribution. In many cases, the variance ratio will be set based upon some external study perhaps a gauge repeatability and reproducibility study. Finally, you may choose to use either student's t distribution or the standard normal distribution to calculate limits and perform tests. I've loaded the seismographic data from Mount Etna into the Stack Graphics 18 data sheet. To do an orthogonal regression, I'll go to relate one factor orthogonal regression. The dependent variable y is ml, the x variable is md. I'll then press OK. 
This will display the Analysis Options dialog box. I'll go ahead and fit the linear model. Based upon published studies of the Mount Etna data, I'm going to set the variance ratio equal to 1.51. I'll take the default student's t distribution for my limits and tests. When I press OK, I'll see a list of tables and graphs. Again, I'll take the defaults and press OK. If you look at the analysis summary, you'll see that the intercept and the slope are both statistically significant. Based upon t-tests, the p-values are both quite small. The estimated correlation is close to 0.9. In addition, you see estimates of the variance of the errors for both y and x, and confidence intervals for the intercept and slope. I'll now double click on the graph to take a closer look. If I click my right mouse button and select pane options, I can add two other fits to the plot. I can add the least squared fit of y versus x and the reverse least squares fit of x versus y. You can see that the orthogonal fit falls between the two other fits. As with other regressions, it's a good idea to take a look at the residuals. I'll go to the list of tables and graphs, and you see you have the ability to plot the residuals both versus the fitted X and the fitted Y. You see slightly different patterns when plotted against those two variables. Finally, you can see how sensitive the estimated intercept and slope are to the method used to fit the line. If I select comparison of estimates, you'll see the estimated intercept and slope using orthogonal regression, using least squares, and using the reversed least squares procedure. With orthogonal regression, the slope is approximately 1.25. With least squares, it's 1.12, and with reverse least squares, it's 1.39. It's important that one select the proper variance ratio in order to get a good estimate of the model.